Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. My name is Katie Carson, I'm the Duchess of Suds, and here at Royalty Soaps, we like to make soap inspired by literally anything that pops into my head. And today, it was these pictures, basically. Like, when you look at all of the Pinterest stuff, and you see this type of thing. I just love it. I can eat it. It looks edible to me. I know there's gonna be someone out there that's like, Catherine, that is a landscape. And I'm like, it still looks edible. Do you see that purple? I mean, you just wanna lick it. This soap has a soap cane in it, which is my favorite type of soap, honestly. Any soap that I can feasibly squeeze a moon into, I'm going to do it. And this one has it on the top and in the soap. And so without further ado, let us whip up Galaxy Girl. So the first thing that we're going to do for this soap is pour our lye water solution into our oils and then we're going to split off about half of our batter to make the purple mountains. Obviously the recipe I'm using is down in the description box below. It's the one I've been using for, oh gosh, who even knows how long, five plus years. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and pour off our first layer here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my secret sauce fragrance oil blend. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blackberry mica. This is from Nurture Soap, mixed with a little bit of black oxide. That's from TKB Trading. I like getting all of my oxides for them because they give me such a good deal when I buy in bulk. And then I'm going to go ahead and blend up on high until mm, about medium thickness, I would say. Okay, and now I can pour this into our two brambleberry molds. And then I'm just going to pour this in until it is even throughout both of the loaf molds. So this should fill it right at halfway full. And I know it looks like a very dark black, but I promise it is a purple black in, in real life, in person, it really is. All right, and now using my large popsicle stick, I'm going to texture pretty heavily. I'm going to push some of this black up to the side and it's still a little bit runny, so I'm definitely going to have to do this again when it gets a little thicker. It was, it was deceptive. I thought it was a lot thicker than it actually was. And then on this side, I'm going to do a smaller amount so it's going to look like there's like a clearing in some trees or in some mountains just a little on this side i split it about three quarters so about three quarters on one side one quarter on the other okay and now for a bit of a more galactic element i'm going to take a little bit of this always a bridesmaid mica add it to my tea strainer here and then i'm just going to tap this on on the top so it is coming out rather quickly and my AC is on so it's kind of pushing it around a little more than I wanted but listen it is literally 106 degrees in Texas today so I have to have the AC on in here <laughs> And now that I've done that, I can set these off to the side and mix up our accent colors. So into this first container, I am adding some ultramarine blue. Into the second container, I'm adding some grape ape. And into the final container, I am adding some pretty kitty. Then I'll add in the rest of my fragrance soil. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and blend these up. All right, so let's go ahead and blend up our kind of like galaxy colors. Let me tell you, I am so, so thrilled. These are turning out just gorgeous. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape out this container real quick. There is less of the pink than the other two colors. Um, I feel like that's worth noting because I just felt like the purple and the blue were more like sky colors and the pink just kind of added to that whole like galaxy girl moment. All right, let's pour into our molds just like this. 
Now I'm gonna have to be careful with how I do this because I need everything to fit in here. And if you add too much and don't leave enough room for the embeds, then they're just flat out not going to fit. So I'm gonna start by breaking the fall. I probably don't need to at this point, but better safe than sorry. I'm gonna get that first layer on. You can see it's not even going to the edges of the soap. It's just down the middle. And I'm kind of letting it kind of fold and run just a little. I feel like that's gonna break up that pink. Okay, that's enough. I'm not gonna take any chances. <laughs> And then I am gonna place rather quickly and I'm putting this right where the biggest gap is going to be. So trying to aim it a little closer to the three quarters mark. I actually have three to put in on this one. I had to splice a few pieces together. Oh, it's not fitting, oh dear. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, and then let's go again. I'll start by pouring on the side, just like this, and then pouring down the middle. Man, this fragrance oil blend is really behaving. I couldn't be more thrilled. All right, and then once again, we're gonna pour down the side, kind of drizzle back and forth. I bet that'll make a really cool look. Yeah, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave this as is. I'm gonna pour the extra soap into a container and then I will get our frosting ready. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some frosting on the top. I'm using the Etico 869 tip for the frosting. And I thought I was gonna start out with everything being kind of runny, but man, it has just set up so fast after I put it in the piping bag. And then also in the piping bag, I added a little bit of purple and a little bit of pink. It is showing up, but not very much, which is what I wanted. I didn't want it to be like this huge highlight. I just wanted there to be little glimmers of it, but I am gonna be rushing on this one. It's pretty obvious because <laughs> I have three embeds to put on the top. So I'm really gonna have to take care and go quickly. Yeah, that little bit of purple in there does help so much. I can't wait to put the embeds on. That is my favorite part of soap making. I don't know if I've ever told you all that. I'm sure I have at some point in time, but yes, my absolute favorite part of soap making is putting embeds on. That's probably why I I make so many high tops. It's so easy for me to design soaps with frosting. I struggle with designing the artisan soaps because I don't know, I guess the frosting is just in my blood. <laughs> boo, boo, doo, boo, boo. Okay, so for this last dollop, I am turning the way that I'm doing this because recently, I don't know what it is. It's like my sense of direction is just warped. And if I do it this way, I'll be sure to get everything where it's supposed to go. Ugh. Perfect. Okay, let's sprinkle some glitter on this first. I'm using a mix of two things from the Good Glitter. One of them is their new Hollow Stardust. And I've talked about the Good Glitter plenty of times, but one of the things I really love about it is that they are biodegradable, eco-friendly glitters. Obviously they're plastic free and they biodegrade in the sewage water. So they like leave no trace. They just break down, which is super, super super cool. It is something you do have to be a little bit careful of whenever you use it with cold process soap though. I always make sure that my soap isn't really, really runny because if it is a runny batter consistency, it may kind of melt that glitter down. So I always wait until it's firm. Um, so firm that it's lost the complete like slick looking top. This is especially for artisan soaps. You absolutely have to make sure you do it or else, yeah, it can kind of melt and start. It's a biodegrading journey, which is not very aesthetically pleasing. So that's, that's my tip. Just make sure that your top isn't shiny at all. It should be completely matte before adding. First additive are these dark plum colored crescent moons. They are very, very, very dark purple. I'm gonna put the end pieces on first because I wanna make sure that those are displayed properly. And I always have to do these a little different <laughs> than the other ones, obviously, because I don't want to chop it just like that. And one more right here. And then for the rest of them, I'm simply going to stick them in on the side. I have recently been painting and redecorating my son Will's room, and he is obsessed with Winnie the Pooh. He loves Winnie the Pooh, and he loves um, like tons of books. Like that boy, my word, he would just read all day long. He loves a comfy, cozy chair, just cuddling up, and he's three, which, you know, I've always heard that three-year-olds like have the most 
most energy, but that has just not been my experience with my son. He just isn't like that. So I have just tried to kind of watch and see what he enjoys the most. And I, I showed him some pictures to see like, what do you like about rooms? And I tried to show him a full spectrum of ideas, like from things that are very neutral to things that are very dark and things that are very bright and colorful, just to kind of see what he likes. And it was so funny to see how <laughs> his tastes are so similar to like an old man. <laughs> He, had, he loved big chairs. He liked a lot of really dark colors, which was kind of no surprise. That's, that's, that's Lily's thing. She likes all the bright rainbow stuff. So he liked anything that had whales in it. He liked anything that was Winnie the Pooh themed, um, like the old Winnie the Pooh. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I know as I'm talking, he's only three. So he will probably change his mind as time goes on. But one of the things I loved about growing up was that my mom, Mom tried to make our rooms like match us at each stage of life. So as we got older, she'd be like, do you still like these things? Are these still things that you are connecting with and making you happy? And if not, let's try something else. Don't be afraid to put a new coat of paint on it. So I remember that from a very young age. I mean, and I appreciated it then. And it was something that as I was growing up, I'm like, I'm going to have to do that for my kids. And they seem to really enjoy it. So I've just finished his little reading nook. We painted it a dark blue blue and I tried to support as many small shops as possible. Uh, I, I've told y'all guys before, I am not necessarily the best person to come to for all of the thrifty, like super inexpensive things when it comes to home decor because my priority lies more with supporting small businesses when I can, which typically costs a little bit more. Most of the time it's heirloom quality products and that's just the way it is. So I would rather save up for longer um, and get less and support small businesses and to have a lot of little things. Okay, I have two more embeds. I have these beautiful amethyst crystals and then I also have these stars and they have like this dark blue shimmer in them. It's probably hard for the camera to see, but they look super cool. So I've got to figure out which way I wanna put them. If I wanna put the crystal on top or the star on top. So I'm gonna try it two different ways. We'll try it first with the star, which is looking really good actually. Well, okay, so let's try it with the crystal and the star on the bottom. So put the star in about right here and the crystal in like right there. Oh, I don't know. Both of them look good. And I can't tell which one looks more balanced either. I feel like it might be better to have these two dark colors broken up. So I think I'm going to go with star on top. Somebody's going to get a star down at the bottom. <laughs> So yeah, I bought from lots of different Etsy shops. I got different maps of different worlds like Middle Earth and Wonderland and all that kind of good stuff. It's just been really cool. And it's been so fun to get to do it in a kid room because I've never, ever, ever bought anything or styled anything like that before. So I've just had the best time. And Lily is so excited for me to do hers because I did his first and now she's like, okay, mom, I want all the mermaids. I want all the pink. I want all the colors like she she knows what she wants so that's gonna be really fun but I just finished Will's room and I will have to show it to you guys at some point in time man those end pieces are awesome I'm just gonna poke the rest of these stars in today I also learned about different mopping recipes like recipes for the mop water that you make didn't know that was a thing apparently there's lots of different ones to try so lily and i got my o cedar mop that's right consider me influenced but man that mop is the best i like threw away my swiffer because it was not getting anything clean compared to that o cedar mop um <laughs> and i've been d experimenting to see what cleans the best and i like tried the all natural thing with only using essential oils and and whatever and that didn't seem to work very good it left streaks all over my my floor and so now I'm trying other things but I just tried a blend with a uh, fabuloso and tide and stuff and that didn't leave any streaks on the floor and it smelled the best so that was super cool and I think I'm gonna experiment with different uh, recipes which has kept cleaning so fun and interesting I think that's something I've talked about recently is how I've like gotten into trying to clean my house and trying to make it more organized and I did the laundry room and I started labeling more things and gosh 
it has been so helpful. And I know that's not the thing for everybody. There's a lot of people that like maintaining something like that would totally stress them out. But for me personally, having everything with a place and in its place has really just added to my peace of mind. I've started to do laundry every other day. Uh, we have four people in our family, so I don't need to do it every day, but keeping up with that and on top of that, um, like wiping down my counters every day, making sure I vacuum every day. And man, the difference it has made in my mood. I, I wasn't even like sad or anything before, but it just brightened me up. And honestly, I am excited when I wake up in the morning. I have tons of things during the day that I look forward to, but that little thing of like having a clean house to look forward to. I drink my coffee in the morning. I have lots of different coffee mugs that I've bought from small shops and that I've bought, you know, whenever I go places. So I have lots of pretty ones to pick from. Uh, my friend Cassie uh, owns a shop called Sparrowberry and she does pottery. And I have one of every single one of her little dinos <laughs> because they're so cute. So I have them in my coffee bar area and I use the mug that I have from her sometimes. And I just sit down and I map out all of my things and it just starts me off so good. Even if I have hard things during the day that I have to do, starting off with a clean house and doing a bit of laundry, I get up before my kids. I started going to bed a little earlier so I could wake up before them so I have some time to myself. It's been incredible. I also have a new cat. His name is Huckle. He is inside and he is just, oh, he's so cute. So there's so many things to talk about. I could talk on and on about Huckle, but that's all the time we have for right now because I'm done. I have finished the entire thing. So I'm going to spritz it with rubbing alcohol. I promise I'll talk more about Huckle in an upcoming video because he's so precious and sweet. And I want to show you guys some videos. If you want to see him, head to my personal TikTok because I already have videos posted of him. Um, yeah, he's just, oh, he's so cute, y'all. You'll love it. And we'll be back, of course, in 18 to 24 hours to cut up these bars. They're going to look so good. Y'all are not going to believe this the next day. Oh, look at it. Look at that blue. Look at the side. Oh my word, it's so beautiful. The smell, one of my better concoctions, I must say. I'm gonna place this on Evangeline here and press down very gently. Take one out of the middle, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Oh, look at the moon rising over the dark mountains. I love the swirl. This turned out perfect. Of course, we have the dark crescent moon on top. We've got our little shiny star. We've got our little crystal point. Like, it's, it's literally everything I wanted. Also, look at the end pieces. I know this one got a little shaved off, but this one is pretty much perfect. I'm just loving them. They're so pretty. Yeah, and these real little amethyst points on the edge, man, they're pulling that purple color that I drizzled on the blue, like into the whole creation. Like it just, it really completes it. Okay, but putting these two together kind of look like two little eyes, like looking off to the side, like, whoa, what's going on over there? I cannot wait to take pictures of these. I think these are going to photograph so well. And there's certain soaps that I just know are going to look better on it, like in a picture, like a picture is going to do them justice. And I feel like anything with this amount of blue definitely looks so good in a photo. So I can't wait to photograph these. I normally don't like photographing things because I feel like I'm not doing the products justice because I am not a photographer. But alas, that's just something that <laughs> we're doing right now. And maybe one day I'll get to work with a professional photographer and that will be so cool. Okay, question of the day. What is your favorite movie? moon phase. I personally, uh, I'm just going to be honest here. I don't love a full moon. I feel like a full moon is too bright and I want it to be a little more dim because it comes right into my window and makes it hard for me to sleep. Let me tell you what I love. A little sliver moon that looks like the Cheshire cat in Alice in Wonderland. That is my favorite moon because it's so easy for me to imagine him laughing up there and it gives me great joy. But I want to know what you guys think, of course. So be sure to answer the question down in the comments section below. Are people still doing that? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Wonderful. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Those stones, am I right? A real good find. Always remove stones from your soap before use. They are just there for pretty presentation. They are not there for you to actually scrub your body with. If you want to get your paws on this bar, you can. It will be available the first Saturday of August with the rest of the Night at the Skadium collection. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, like going out there and looking at the stars. <laughs> or maybe getting yourself a star projector. I got one of those for my kids to go with their like bath time so that they can have galaxy baths. It's their favorite thing ever. They will be entertained for literally hours. But as an adult, tell me that wouldn't be the coolest like shower or bath experience. Like what a mood. You could just settle on in, listen to some like calming zen music and just breathe in and breathe out. I don't know. That that's that's my big idea. But of course, as always, just do whatever makes you happy. And I will see you guys in the next video which happens to be coming out on my birthday. So, be there or be square and have an absolutely royal day. Bye for now. Yeah.